VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to my lounge. This is VIP Access Podcast with Aniko. And right here, I'm speaking to various artists every week from across the continent about all the amazing things they're doing in the industry and for themselves. This is the E-Less Podcast on music and culture from this side of the continent. And I'm really happy that some of you are here every other week to check out who I'm speaking to. So today I'm speaking to an artist who is an open book, he says, but to me, I'm just like waiting to dig in because I haven't really had an opportunity to ever interview him. So I just want to discover him. You know, many of you know him from Successful Hits. Angela, you know exactly who I'm speaking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is Butros. Karibu. Yeah, Santi, Santi. The introduction <laughs> was just beyond. Yeah? Yeah. Yo, look at those grills, man. I mean, I have, I'd like to shine killer my hey. later, so, yeah. You are such a superstar. And I'm so glad to be in your presence. Like, <laughs> Same here. look at those grills. What is that? Like... It's just, I don't know, the, we call them slugs, but... You know, oh, not grills. I mean, grills in Zawa, so the money. Ah! No, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, we like to call them slugs because they sound like more, you know, like uptown. But it's platinum or what? No, this is silver. Damn, yeah. you got real silver in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. Yo, and how much is it? It's a, it's a bag. <laughs> it's a bag. It's a, it's a bag. I can't say it's a, it's cheap, but it's not a super expensive. It's affordable if you want them. Okay, yeah. that's nice. That's nice. I like that. I like yeah. that. I like everything about you. Thank you. Because um, you know, if somebody looks at you and they don't know you, never heard of you, they want to know who you are because you are just dripping super stardom. And I think that's always been you. You know, yeah. I think the first time we met was probably in twenty nineteen. When we had, you probably don't remember, when we had our first event called Artist Talk Back and we were at um, the Michael Joseph Center oh. and you came over with your AD family, um, um, you know, crew. I'm not <laughs> sure whether you guys were speaking. Were you speaking? You were not. You were, we were. We were. You we were had speaking. Like, we, yeah, we, we actually... We actually threw a, a few punches out there. So yeah. yeah. So that was cool. You know, it's the first time I got to see you guys. And I think... Yeah. You had been quite active in the industry even way before then. Yes. But I think that was around the like breakthrough period. Yeah, the 2019s, yeah. Exactly. And um, what I love about your brand, I feel like from the start, you've been on, on this consistent trajectory. Yeah. And I don't know what's going to happen next, but I feel like this is still not it for Butros. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, got to know about you um, globally through this hit record, Angela, and the massive remix that you did um, with, um, with who? With Conscience. With and Conscience. Oh my God, how do I forget <laughs> Conscience' name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that's just the beginning even for yeah. you because since I got to know you, you know, following your music, I didn't know you personally, but I've been following your music, your, your team, yeah. you know, how you guys roll. I feel like y'all have been super consistent and just kind of growing bricks and bricks every other year, every other day, every, with the, every other album, every other release. Great for me to have you here um, on VIP Access just to get to know the person behind all the success and hits. So um, I, I guess the first thing is, how do you feel about all this recognition and success, especially with Angela? You know, it's a big tune. Like, honestly, it's... Um it's fulfilling to just know that every time um, I woke up, like Ali slept like at odd hours, you know what I'm saying? Just putting that work wasn't in vain. It actually came through. So, yeah, that, just having that part of me, knowing that, that's everything. Yeah. And did you ever anticipate that Angela was going to be this huge? No, no. I actually thought it was going to be a, a hit, but this one became a mega hit. So, yeah. nah, I didn't think it was going to be like that. For a billion views, yeah, nah. I didn't think like actually you can go to a different machinani place at Akunata and have someone just actually know you. Even sure sure tells you like uh, they see you from watching their daughter watching you on TV. Yeah, that's and something. And the TikTok sensation. Trust, that's crazy. That's even crazy, yeah, And so. it even went to YouTube. I saw like people posting different YouTube. Yeah, you know, so Angela's. Many. So many. Yeah, even for me, Linish Tuambaya, I was like. I mean, I thought it was going to be a hit, a million, maybe two million, but hey, 
<laughs> and it keeps going. It keeps going. Like even more and more. Even the remix is just crazy. It's even at half a million right now. The the audio. So yo, yeah. big ups, Shout big ups. Yeah. Congratulations. So fans, Thank you. Congratulations. Um. So take me through the making of Angela. Who's Angela? There's no one called Angela. There guy. has to be There's someone no called, called Angela. Angela. Everyone come keeps on. on asking me about but, that okay, question. But okay, if there was no Angela, you've yeah. met Angelas who've come and, you know, Funny enough, presented themselves to you now. Funny enough, I knew a friend called Angela, but I've never been like, it's um, Jekatia de to Angela. <laughs> you know, but Angela was supposed to be like a, like, a, like a phrase that we use to just give a man his preference, like the name. Yeah. Like that's my Angela, you know. Like everyone has their own preference. Like every man has their own preference. So if you say that's your Angela, that means... Yeah. That's what I like. This is my yes. type of girl. So okay. yeah, evil. And actually even the song was just about a mistake. It wasn't even supposed to be recorded or even that wasn't a session for Angela. There was another song with another session that ran late for an hour. So we decided that one or let's just record something to just waste time. Turns out it was going to be the biggest song to change Who's our lives. Who's the producer of Angela? His name is Kaxi. Kaxi he's a bad man. I know. He's, he's bad. a bad man. In Malawi and Kenyan. He's Beef. a bad man. Trust. Yeah. So that's how it happened. Okay. So if, if if we could go back, you know, to you getting into the industry and, you know, founding your record label, Shrap Music, mm. you know, working very closely with you, with Musao and the rest of the artists, yeah. um, who you started with, Yeah. when was that time and how did you come up, you know, with this Shrap? Um, because trap ideally is um, trap. Yeah, shang rap and, shang and popular music. And rap. Um, the the beginning of us as a conglomerate that was like way back. That was I think 2013, 2015. Mm. By the time I think 2015 was the time. Now we got the recognition of our homeboys radio when I was selected for the freshman myself and dope. I mean, yes. And uh, what's his name? Um, K Green. So. After that time, we met other artists to just combine our efforts. And then along the way, just even before that 2019 Corona thing, I think around 2017, 20 something there, I can't remember the, the exact dates. We we decided to just, you know, we were like uh, outsiders who were, were in the game, but mm. when we're just outside because yeah. no one understood what we were doing. You were kind of only existing in your own circle. Exactly. You know, you had your own following you mm. had your own events man shrap nights yeah so it was really crazy just for us to identify ourselves so we decided you know what let's just let's just make our own world let's just create our own genre let's create our own movement and then just build from there and then the coin of the phrase shrap began just as long as you you're rapping you're singing popular music it doesn't matter if you're doing sheng that's sharp mm -hmm. and then it gave birth to a lot a lot. I won't even mention some 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 genres that just popped up, but that's the mention. main reason. That's the main reason. Mention, mention. Nah, there's no need. There's you no don't want to start a fight or what? I don't want to start a fight. You see, the biggest win is when they know that you know and they actually even told you before. That's the biggest win. The other one is just is just for the crowd. Now you identify. What are these genres? Is it the Kenyan drill people? I uh, that's even this recent one. That's Eric Jafani Impact. The ones that made the impact. <laughs> the ones that made the biggest impacts, and you know which ones. Almost like all the artists there came through us. So it's beautiful to see that everything grew and actually everyone formulated whatever they wanted. And then they made something of themselves. You know, you like that's everything for us. Yeah, because I spoke to uh, Groovy Jo yeah. in um, last Shout season of my podcast, and she spoke very highly of you and Musao and you know other artists who she met first when she wanted to come out, and she was like, yeah. "This guy, re guys, really supported me. Yeah. You know, I'd show up at the studio, they would be with me, give me the space, uh, you know, advise me, listen to my rhymes." Yeah. Um, and I, I, I was so happy to hear like this is the kind of person you are, and. You know, your group of other artists are like this. So where did you guys get this from? From other people. I mean, even for us, I don't know, maybe if we were lucky enough, maybe just God was, was on our side. Did you any? But we got a helping hand from guys in the industry. They were willing to tell us, don't go through this side. It's funny, Evie, because... Mm. And we were actually willing to listen because there's that, there's that difference. You're told, but you don't want to listen. Yes. We actually listened so... 
for us, um, plus the way we we were in just personally, just in our personal lives, that's how that's how we are. That's what we got up and wanted to So just taking that into consideration, we were like, there's no need for other guys to also just take three years to learn something you can learn in just months. Yeah. And and the only thing I need to just tell you. So and plus the mindset we had with with Sharp at the time is just trying to say we don't need gatekeeping, we don't need anything, we just need for anyone who can just do their music, just be capable of doing it, you know? That's mm-hmm. the essence of even us doing our own events, you know what I'm saying? So we just give ourselves the platform. Yeah. So it didn't make sense for us to have a knowledge of a certain movement or just and a way to move yourself. and just keep it to ourselves. Yeah. So the ideology just went on. Unfortunately, not everyone was, um, was on board of sharing. So the ones who were not on board, I don't know where they are right now. The ones who got their knowledge and didn't share, I don't know where they are right now. Mm. But the ones I'm talking to right now and the ones I'm seeing move are the ones who actually decided and they actually moved like crazy because they just mm. moved with like free will and that's that's what the industry really needed. Now. You can actually see it move to whatever it is right now. Okay. Um, who are the founding, you know, members of the AD family? <laughs> this is funny. So <laughs> we have we have myself, um, a brother of mine called Della. You know Hanuman. The, I'm a piano DJ. No. <laughs> Not <laughs> he's even. A, he's one of like the biggest Hanuman. I'm a piano DJs in Kenya. He was one of uh, the founding members oh, of nice. ADF. Uh, wow, who, who would everything. have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, so him, uh, myself, and uh, K Green. I remember in my house, K Green came with his uh, PC, and we used that uh, the headphones that you use to communicate. I'm saying the ones gonna collect stuff, the hey, microphone. Hey. We recorded that one on uh, oh VLC, my. I think. Oh my! <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day. So that was the first. Um, the first uh, recording we ever did as ADF, let me say. Mm. Then we told ourselves, oh, okay. And then we just moved from there. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. And and uh, when, when when did you meet Musao? Or was he already there, you know, with you from the start? It's, I feel like it's very important you know, for artists and creatives to have mm-hmm. people in their corner who truly you know, believe in their craft. Because right now in the industry, there's so many people who just want to come to you now because you have a major hit, yeah, global so global record. Many. But you do want to work for the long time with the people who are with you from the very beginning when you still didn't even have an album out or, yeah. you know, three albums out. Yeah. I mean, there are two... Let me, let me say it in two terms. You see, you have to both want something not not him uh, believing in me he has to believe in himself because if he doesn't i'll need to look for another musao who actually because be- musao doesn't just believe in me he believes in himself to be the best marketer the best uh, how can i say the best manager the, yeah he promoter. believes that you know what i'm saying yeah so when i believe i'm the best also and when you're combined together we a force not to reckon with that's why we went from 10 to only like three now. Because it's not yeah. just about someone who believes in you. You might believe in me so much that you'll never do something that that you were supposed to bring out. Because yeah. himself brings out something in me and I bring out something in him. I love that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is because the the relationship that we that we have is beyond business. Goes personal for more than for more than a a decade. Mm. Yeah? Well, we're actually going to our 15, 16, we're almost 20 years as friends, bro. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Four years from now, we'll be saying 20 years. So for us to build something like that, it means like there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of, if he says this, I have to believe yeah. he has the best interest. So those are the main key factors for us to have something. And then the other factors now come in, me just being an artist, him doing him. Those will come in after mm. that building block has been set. So, yeah. I like that. I like that. And um, I also, I think, read in your bio that you actually started rapping at the age of 12. Yeah. Um, you know, back at home in high rise. Tell me about those days. Like, who are you rapping to? You know, <laughs> was it like your family or just friends in the hood? It was, it was my peers in the hood. 
Um, there's a place we used to play football. I used to love like playing football like badly. So we used to call it H. It was like a tarmac where parking lots, uh, the back side of the parking lot, no one ever used. So we used to like put posts and play ball. And then afterwards, guys would like freestyle and do whatever. Guys would, you know, do their keeping. So I used to be this kids who used to love Lil Wayne. So I used to like try to rap, do my own <laughs> freestyles. So one day I did that same, same uh, freestyle that I actually wrote. It wasn't a freestyle. So I did a freestyle in front of the boys, the big boys now that they were like 15, 18 at that time, uh -huh. some 14. Hey, they were like, what? But the only thing they loved was the N-word because I kept saying the N-word so much. So they thought I was like a <laughs> gangster. So they told me, bro, hey, yo, what's up? Let's uh, let's put you on. So I did like uh, those couple of freestyle in the hood like a couple of times. To a point, some guy came and told me there's this old show at, um, at a carnival or something. Pull up. The grand prize is 10,000. All you need is just freestyle. So I was like, what? I'm going to collect that yeah. money. Ma I, mean, I wasn't even thinking about the money. I, mean, I was thinking like, I'm going to be on stage. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so we pull up. I perform. Funny enough, I won. Yeah, oh, I actually did. congratulations. Yeah. But they gave me like 200. What? No, my, the, the, the boys, they gave me like 200 or something. 200 I mean, I what? 200 shillings. Same time I was pumped, bro. Even that 200 shillings was like a buck that time, bro. <laughs> Hey, something you know, buying you're a kiddo, ice cream. You're a kiddo with 200, hey, bob. 200 bob. This is gonna last you like two mm. weeks. And you know, ice ice cream, Ilea, Ilanini, it was five bob your time. Mm. Do you know how many ice cream pops this is really cool? Yeah, so I was balling in the streets, yeah. So after that time, just being on stage, I don't know that feelings data, actually, just when people were shouting. I just so continued. basically, that was that first moment when you got on that stage, you know, that, like, this is where. That was it. I am meant to that be. That was it. And the same, same year, I decided to go and uh, um, participate in the public speaking in school. Mm. So because of that uh, that whole incident, I actually even won national that year and even Ish. in class seven. I Big swear up. to God, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so my love for the stage <laughs> and the attention just came from there. Imagine. I love yeah. it. I love it for you so much because I also just love that you just don't love like your craft so much, but you, you love to express it out. I feel like there's so many artists who are dope artists, but when you talk to them, they're not able to express that, but you're able to express this and, and you're quite a, a great speaker. I think I even had you speak at a different interview. It was like, wow, he sounds so amazing. So I love that for you. Appreciate it. Were you always this confident or is it something you need to have in, 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 the, in the world of rap and hip hop? I, I don't know. There are artists who are introverts like crazy, but they're the best of the best. But for me, I don't know when it came because I think I've always been like, you know, you know those kids who have always been, they've been famous since they were kids. That's oh, you. Yeah, because I was so small. You know, when I was in primary, I was so small, like so small, like Aww. tiny. And then like a big head. My my head is so it means like that. even this time you 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 are doing the freestyles. You are, was, you are bro, tiny. I was tiny, I, bro. Until from from three, that's when I started growing. I was a tiny little short boy. So it must have been mind blowing that this small person. Yeah. So I was liked by almost everyone everywhere I went. So for me, the confidence was always there. I never found a spot where it made me feel like diminished mm. or like inferior to someone. But over the years, I mean, the confidence just grew. I don't know. Yeah. That's I guess nice. I was lucky. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. And you're also you know, part of Empower in 2015. Yes, I was. Did that opportunity, you know, open your eyes to anything or would you say that was also a, a significant moment for you in your career? It did. It did. It legitimized, like, um, me and myself as an artist because it was a time where we were taken, Kenyan artists were taken as jokers, especially upcoming artists. Unless you were doing numbers or except your Kali or Saudi Soul, you are considered just... Yeah. So the empower thing just legitimized my brand as just an actual artist or maybe just an actual upcoming artist who has a future. And actually I could get into certain rooms where I couldn't get into like before. So yeah, it really helped a certain mm. point of my career. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about your albums? I think now you have three albums out. I don't have an album yet. 
you do all of them are just mixtapes imagine you're kidding i swear to god why you call them mixtapes to me it's an album especially your first one that came out in 2020 the six views everyone's yes. been telling me the same six thing six views and it was one of the top charting albums in kenya that year yeah i think it was top 10 yeah. most streamed yeah but you don't consider that an album no because that time i was still i was still because You know when people say it in that manner they say it in numbers but I don't consider the artistic side because mm. myself see you always they dream I'm pretty yeah. sure you always they dream and see where and Nico wants to be yeah. or where, where Nico Most is already definitely. just other guys are not seeing it I always see that all the time so even for me even the album the album that I have was done like 20 2020 2021 end of 2021 mm. I was done with the album Until When did Kablam Tindo come out 2022 mm. and this album came out end of 2022 so you had two albums those are EPs now so you see, old I, sta- I started I started with the mixtape just okay. to see if I can now do an actual so six views is a mixtape yeah. and then you have two EPs two EPs now and um Angela comes from the latest yeah okay now you see now me coming now with now Mawingu Mawingu now is the last EP before now I do the the album mm. because also now I feel now as an artist I've grown now I can stand in front of even bigger artists and actually not disappoint you know yeah. you're not just even just numbers even just as an artist wise I have knowledge of things that I can just put to the table mm. at that time I was just an upcoming and I didn't feel personally I was I felt like I can release music I just don't want to name it an album because mm. when you put out an album it will be that was his yeah, first of album course. so my first album has to be something and it is something okay Trust. well when are we listening to this first this album year. this year this year this year we're going to have the release the third that's quarter dope. that's dope. gonna see it. this was a lot of work in progress you know yeah. a lot of us considered your previous records as albums but you never did yeah. you know your first um discography you you call it a mixtape then kablam tindo and then mawingu both of them were eps um angela came from mawingu yeah So someone would think that you know those were great albums but this is now the album. The album yeah. So tell me about the making of this substantial record that now you know will always be defined as your first debut album. Quality, the sonics, production, the features, the way it sounds, the things I'm saying, the songs that are there cuz you know I mean, I spent a whole bag on that. I've never okay. even on my videos never spent a bag on uh on, on an audio like that. So even the guys that had behind the had like one of the best engineers in Kenya. Like the best of the best, the ones who even work with Saudi, the ones who work with Who are I these? Name drop. They come from Promised Land. Okay. And we also outsourced some guys from uh, Europe okay. just to make sure that we have that um even not only that oomph, like that you know what I'm saying? So and also I decided to switch a little bit because you know I'm uh, you know guys like me as a trapper you know they like the the trap side of me but I like the popular side of me a lot and I felt like that's why we did the whole Mawingu just to push more of the popular side mm. and people actually liked the popular side even more so I'm I lean And more. I also love you when you do a lot of the, like the dance hall raga you know Thank I love you. that and you Thank always you. have that in each Every. one of your albums yes, if do. anyone listens to all the albums there's always one or two tracks going that direction yeah yeah so this so album we the, decided the like so you you love more yeah that's the one i like more really yeah i mean people like me when i'm when i'm gangster and i'm not gangster <laughs> and so yeah i like me i like i like being a soft life ambassador so yeah i've been mean, uh, so the album we decided to go more of the soft soft a little bit softer side of the of the of the sonic and nice. uh, i think i did a very great job and in terms of features oh, 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 oh i think i covered like the whole of africa that's nice mm, that's so, nice yeah that's nice i mean well done this has been um you know you could say the past couple of months but to me i think you've from the moment you came into the industry you yeah. know you've been working towards this moment yeah. and now everybody can go out there and stream your you know your first album and, and all the other records yes. congratulations on Thank that you. one um and in terms of the business yeah. um ad music business the brand 
what more are you guys creating or what more do you want to add on to already the platforms and um, entities you've created? I think in the past, you guys were really major, especially in the eventing space. Yeah. Um, how do you see your business expanding in, in this year or the next couple of years? Um, it was necessary for us to just, that first break, that um, Corona break, it was really necessary, I think. It was an unfortunate incident, but for us, it was really necessary just to take a step, step back and then mm. just see, because we push the culture, but at the same time, we take L's, you know? So we had to find a common ground where, also for us, we don't like, we don't do it like as much at Tuna Tuatu Josh or at Kunya Maji, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So ADF Music now officially became a label. We took in some few kids we were bringing up, including um, Joe, Groovy Joe. Mm -hmm. So we want to see now how we can just stop now telling kids what to do and actually do it for them. In terms of, we want to become a musical household like the Ogopa days. Nice. You know? Wonderful. We want to have like hella kids, have them move because I'm, I'm not the, there's another tier that's behind me mm. and it's the one that's booming right now. Yeah. I can't and I'm be, sure they're reaching out every day. They are. They are. And um, I'm not going to just wait around so that I can become Drake so I can do it. I'll start right now. I love it. Do whatever needs to be done. And then the events thing. Huh. I think we've done we've done we've done whatever everyone has just copied. So we are planning on just switching it up. Surprises, surprises. <laughs> surprises, surprises. It's better when people see it other than you just talk. Because also uh, my grandma used to tell me, we send back to kill a kid because kill him to now gonna do mumzuri. Of course. Yeah, I don't know mum bum do mumzuri. In kama mbaki sima kitu tari, but I don't know. So I believed it. So I don't like telling people what is about to happen yeah. in squidging. But things are about to happen. Badly. Yeah. Okay. What what's your plan for expanding the brand across the continent and uh, around the world, like in terms of tours? Um, and when I say tours, doesn't just mean like going to perform somewhere, but even going to other key markets to promote yourself. Because I feel like your your brand is there, the sound is international, yeah. the hit. You know, have we've seen the proof of concept? Yeah. You know, we've seen the likes of Conscience, Global yeah. Stars. You know, coming over to collaborate with you. We've seen you have proper distribution channels, you know, great management. Yeah. So I feel like everything is ripe for this brand to jump into the other markets or countries. Yeah. Um, as of last year, as uh, the end of last year, we, we began the East African tour because we wanted to actually just not even, as you say, not performing. We actually went to the radio stations, met that. with the, met with the, um, the bloggers, went to the clubs that are popping just to chill vibe. That's nice. Yeah. Um, we did Uganda, we did uh, Tanzania, and I, would, I won't lie to you, Tanzania, that's the place where I changed my mindset on how the industries are they so move diff different. They move so different. They, the they move, move so different. Yeah, so I was like, you know, but that time we went to Zanzibar, Zanzibar is just maybe Shere to Sana, but, you know, I mean, right now, we just want to, we, we're supposed to go to Rwanda, um, I think, next month, but right now we want to see how we can see we can we can go to to European countries. Nice. Cause see that's where the bag is, actually. That's where the connections are. And these guys they reach out, they can reach uh, someone in CG Kangundo yeah. from CG Steto. Yeah. I wanna know the channels they use so that they can get those guys to listen to our, to their music yes. thousands of kilometers yes. away. So to leave Juaya East Africa. We want to see if we can just go now to the other countries of Africa. But originally, right now, I'm not going to Europe. Mm. To see, not just to perform, to see what these guys are doing. Because it has to be there's something they're doing. It's not far away from us, but there has to be something they're doing. Yeah. So our songs can get yeah, there the same way. Yeah, they definitely have, you know, a structure that mm. we can borrow from. Yes. What I personally like from um from Europe or Europeans is yeah. how they um plan everything around summertime. Yeah. Because they have longer days. So it's like so many events, festivals, so many things happen happening around a certain period. I feel like yeah. for us, because we are almost su a summertime all year, <laughs> anything happens anytime. anytime. But it's good to have such a strategy where you're like, from this time of the year to this time, yeah. I want to do 10 shows or something. So th there'll always be a structure to learn from, you know, in Tanzania, in Europe, wherever. And I think it's, it's always great for us creatives to go out and see what others are doing and then yeah. incorporate that in very. what we are already doing. Yeah, very yeah. important. 
yeah i don't i don't like the fact that people say there's our there's an artist i don't know if they will know who i will mention who but this artist said at right now apart from two artists i'm not doing any feature with anyone i'm not doing studio. i'm like bro did, did you just see even what our biggest artist just david just did just a few weeks ago did you see even what drake did with even 21 savage i don't get where you get 1000 views 100,000 views and it becomes like you've known everywhere because me we used to think you the time we were doing the sharp night we used to think when you're popping in Nairobi you're popping everywhere bro Nairobi has like how many we are 6 million right now mm. we not even our we don't average 6 million views you get what i mean like on a yeah. song yeah. so that means you don't even have the whole of Nairobi not even to mention the whole country yes so i mean the mentality right now should be anywhere anyone can any place Anytime. my song can be listened yeah. to i'm a hey i need to be there that's supposed to be the mentality yeah man. you're so hungry i love that <laughs> i have to be man the fruits of the labor man and you've done so many collabs but basically you're saying and i'm a continue collaborating yeah no matter what because the essence of of us doing this and marketing ourselves is to be known you don't have to decrease those chances by saying you yet you have not done anything bro you haven't done anything so yeah that's my just my that's really opinion. good advice you know yeah. you're giving out to anybody listening especially the artists in the industry like Man. it's it never stops you know never stops. you have a hit record you have a big collab when is the next you know and and did conscience reach out to you or how did the collaboration come about we reached out and uh i have to shout out jimani for you know just nailing the you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah so it was actually hum, it was super humble actually we talk like right now like we're or pen pals <laughs> form of flattery actually that's how it goes and then they also say good um good artist copy great artist still ah okay i guess that's on it's that's on that you that's know that's on that <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're wrapping up the show yes, today sir. with amazing butros please go out there and stream all his music available on all digital channels he's the illest rap and trap god king from this side of east africa representing nairobi always thank you butros i appreciate you thank you everybody listening please come back next week i'm going to have yet another great artist right here at vip access thank you vip access, VIP access. with aniko on africa loud